The Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded more than three decades ago in 1986, but if you watch the miniseries Chernobyl, which got a ton of attention because of the gritty and strange details that most people didn't know about the tragic event, while well, most people know the general story that due to human error, the nuclear reactor exploded and unleashed radioactive material across Europe. This is the control panel where the engineers started the safety test. We have everything from creepy jail to a haunted hospital on the 15 weirdest things ever found in Chernobyl. <laughs> abandoned Carnival The eerily abandoned Pripyat Amusement Park was only open one day on April 27, 1986, as entertainment for those preparing to evacuate the Ukrainian city following the Chernobyl disaster. Festive decorations still linger near the haunting rides for the planned opening on May 1, 1986 that never came to be. Its looming Ferris wheel has become a creepy icon of the nuclear disaster, and visitors sometimes leave stuffed animals in its cars as a memorial. The park still contains varying levels of radiation although the concrete areas are mostly safe. The area under the Ferris wheel has some of the highest levels of radiation in the amusement park. There's also an abandoned bumper car ride, with most rides still fully intact. Radiation levels around the park vary. The liquidators washed radiation into the soil after the helicopters carrying radioactive materials used the grounds as a landing strip so concreted areas are relatively safe. However, areas where moss has built up can emit amongst the highest level of radiation in all of Pripyat. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. And now it's time for our missing topic. We found this photo of a deformed creature online and have no idea what it is or where it came from. This could be the act of nuclear radiation deforming an animal at birth. We're not sure what animal this could be, but it does have a strange and creepy look going on. However, many animals look gross at birth, so maybe this will not be similar once it ages. Whatever this is, it might not even be alive. But what could this actually be? What do you guys think this odd thing is? Would you pet it? You can join the conversation by using the hashtag missing topic in the comment section below. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> nuclear Graffiti Since the nuclear accident at the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power station, nature has taken over. Slowly, art has appeared on the walls as well. The shadow-like figures and the wild animals of the zone being some of the most frequently seen. Pripyat is a haunting city and the street art that's appeared over the years is equally haunting. Some tell the story of disaster, a small boy peeking around a wall, another screaming in distress. Others depict the wild bears and deer that have returned to the area as it's become the wilderness. Tucked around corners, in doorways, and on some of the larger buildings, the graffiti is one way that people can tell their own feelings about the zone and the disaster. The graffiti in Pripyat is easy to find without needing to go off the main tourist trail. Look at the artwork and its surroundings as the context of the buildings and the art can add to the story within the photograph. Some of the paint is peeling and the paintings are fading as time progresses. This can be overcome by increasing the contrast in the image or by embracing the decay in your photograph. Some graffiti is now being vandalized which means that some are gone forever but it's evolving and new pieces are appearing all the time. What's your favorite piece of street art? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Chernobyl Grandmas. To us, it may be a radioactive exclusion zone. To them, it's their ancestral homeland. 30 years since the Chernobyl disaster, a defiant community of women continue to scratch out an existence on its toxic land. Through their uplifting stories, we see the healing power of shaping one's destiny and the subjective nature of risk. Their stories are the subject of a new documentary called The Babushkas of Chernobyl. The film's director, Holly Morris says they were drawn back by a very deep connection to motherland and home. It's where their parents were born and passed, where their children were born, where their gardens and animals were. Morris says the woman had deep roots in the area, going back centuries. In recent decades, they survived all the hardships of World War II. So when a couple of decades after that Chernobyl happened, they were unwilling to flee in the face of an enemy that was invisible. The babushkas were evacuated along with everyone else at first, resettled into high-rise apartment buildings in the nearby Ukrainian capital Kyiv and elsewhere, separated from all that mattered to them. 
But in the weeks and months after the accident, they started going back. At first, they were turned back. The officials there said, we'll let the old people return home. They'll pass soon, but they will be happy. That's kind of dark or optimistic, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> Forgotten dolls. There are a lot of scary dolls in the zone. Some of them are in the same place like the time of the nuclear catastrophe. Some of them were moved by the tourists and the photographers because of the dramatic pictures. Dolls with their vacant eyes, stiff heads, and plastic limbs are creepy. But left behind to decay after a disaster, they're simply sad, a reminder that the children who abandoned them were affected by tragedy too. Among those who had to flee immediately were residents of Pripyat, Ukraine, where many workers from the plant lived, including the emergency responders. The children of these towns left behind their belongings at schools, nurseries, and camps. Among the toys they abandoned were dolls that over the years have succumbed to radiation, neglect, and the elements. People who returned to evacuated areas years later to explore or look at what became a creepy ghost town brought cameras, and their creepy photos show portraits of decaying toys. It's possible people posed some of the creepy Chernobyl dolls on the list, but even if that's the case, the dolls are a reminder of a truly unfortunate accident that destroyed a great deal that the people here will never forget. <laughs> Cooling Pond Catfish the catfish of the Chernobyl cooling pond are huge, but they're no river monsters, they simply don't have predators. Plus, they're being fed by tourists daily, hence why they grow to massive sizes. The population of fish in general, not only the catfish, thrive in these waters that pretty much act as a natural reserve. Very, very few mutations lead to extra large size, they just grow less efficiently. They're less capable of catching food and they tend to not live as long. This is also the reason why we must rule out radiation as a possible explanation for the size of this thing. Among the hefty residents of the Chernobyl, the pond is Wells catfish, a species known to reach an unbelievable proportion across much of its range. As for the maximum size of these aquatic giants, a quick search will turn up stories of 800-pound record breakers, and while these are typically exaggerations, a Wells can reach 350 pounds under the right conditions. An Italian fisherman managed to catch and release a colossal whales. As you can see, its size far surpasses that of the radioactive monsters. It's good these fish don't have massive teeth. <laughs> radioactive wolves. Gray wolves have especially flourished in the exclusion zone, with their population density within the zone estimated at up to seven times greater than its surrounding reserves. Given this high population density, researchers expected some wolves born within the zone would disperse into the surrounding landscapes, since one area can only hold so many large predators. Now, for the first time, they've tracked a young wolf that's definitely left the exclusion zone. The scientists tracked 14 gray wolves in the Belarusian region of the exclusion zone, 13 adults over two years old, and one male juvenile one to two years old by fitting them with GPS collars. No wolves there were glowing. They all have four legs, two eyes, and one tail. Over 21 days, the animal ended up about 186 miles outside the exclusion zone. Due to a malfunction in the young wolf's GPS collar, the researchers couldn't determine if the animal eventually returned to it or remained outside permanently. These findings are the first proof of the wolf dispersing beyond the zone. And these findings might not just apply to wolves, it's reasonable to assume similar things are happening with other animals as well. A question these findings raise is whether animals born in the exclusion zone are bringing mutations with them as they go out into the landscape. Because with Chernobyl, the first thing people think about is mutations. There's no evidence to support that this is happening, and it's an interesting area of future research but it's not something to worry about. <laughs> Mutant deer. During the long years of background radiation, nature and all living near the Chernobyl under the influence of radiation mutates. Sometimes mutations both acquire mutations terrible shape. While few people live near Chernobyl now, animals living in the vicinity of the accident allow us to study the effects of radiation and gauge recovery from the disaster. Most animals have moved away from the accident and those deformed farm animals that were born did not reproduce. After the first few years following the accident, scientists focused on studies of wild animals and pets that had been left behind to learn about Chernobyl's impact. Although the Chernobyl accident can't be compared to the effect of a nuclear bomb because the isotopes released by the reactor differ from those produced by a nuclear weapon, 
Both accidents and bombs cause mutations and cancer. It's crucial to study the effects of the disaster to help people understand the serious and long-lasting consequences of nuclear releases. Moreover, understanding the effects of Chernobyl may help humanity react to other nuclear power plant accidents. The animals are radioactive because they eat radioactive food, so they may produce fewer young and bear mutated progeny. Even so, some populations have grown. Ironically, the damaging effects of radiation inside the zone may be less than the threat posed by humans outside of it. Some of the animals seen within the zone include badgers, swans, moose, elk, turtles, deer, and many more. What would be the creepiest radioactive animal to you? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Chernobyl stalkers. Some people go to the mountains, some to the jungle. Oleg Shalashov prefers one of the most radioactive spots on Earth, the Chernobyl exclusion zone. There are actually two zones, one in Ukraine and a separate off-limit area in Belarus. The one in Belarus is rarely mentioned or visited except by scientists, in part because of tight restrictions the government imposes on visitors. Both are wild radioactive biomes that seem healthy and ordinary to the eye. But the forests, lakes, rivers, and marshes disguise the contamination in the soil on the leaves and nestled in forsaken villages. Oleg used to be what Ukrainians call a stalker, someone who defies the official government prohibition and secretly enters the zone in the spirit of exploration, romance, bravado, desperation, or simply because they found a way to get in undetected. In the early days, the first stalkers in the zone were murderers and other criminals escaping the police, stealing things. This was somewhere they could go to hide. Stalkers are people who like to visit different urban environments in abandoned or semi-abandoned places. There are about 10,000 empty apartments in Pripyat that are in ruins with leaking ceilings, mushrooms growing in them, but there are also a few thousand that still have wallpaper, the windows are fine, furniture isn't broken, there are beds that are quite comfortable. If you don't take anything with you when you leave, if you don't poach, if you don't gather radioactive mushrooms, if you don't steal some abandoned building materials or other items, well, if they catch you, then you might get off with a fine," he said. <laughs> Elephant's Foot Eight months after the nuclear accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine, workers who entered a corridor beneath the damaged number 4 reactor discovered a startling phenomenon. Black lava that had flowed from the reactor core as it had been some sort of human-made volcano. One of the hardened masses was particularly startling, and the crew nicknamed it the elephant's foot because it resembled the foot of the massive animal. A decade later, several images of the elephant's foot, which was estimated to weigh 2.2 tons, were shown to the public. Chernobyl's elephant's foot is a solid mass of melted nuclear fuel mixed with concrete, sand, and core sealing material. Because elephant's foot was so radioactive, scientists at the time used a camera on a wheel to photograph it. A few researchers got close enough to take samples for analysis. What they found was that the elephant's foot was not the remnants of the nuclear fuel. Instead, nuclear experts explained that the elephant's foot is composed of a rare substance called corium, which is produced in a nuclear accident when nuclear fuel in parts of the reactor core structures overheat and melt, forming a mixture. Corium has only formed naturally five times in history. This is something you don't see every day, that's for sure. <laughs> claw of Death The Claw of Death sits alone in a dead pocket of a forest on the outskirts of Pripyat, where it was abandoned in the aftermath of the cleanup efforts following the 1986 disaster. Workers, unsure of where to leave the highly radioactive claw, dumped the spooky piece of machinery in the depths of the forest, far from the beaten track in the hope nobody would ever find it was simply deemed too dangerous to leave anywhere else. But while the claw isn't easy to find, a handful of official guides know where it's located. Even so, very few tourists request permission from Ukrainian officials to get close to the highly contaminated object. It's now become a scary relic of the tragedy that happened 33 years ago. Yet like almost everything about Chernobyl, even a discarded piece of radioactive machinery is still capable of stirring up feelings of both horror and morbid fascination. The claw is a large piece of crane machinery that was used in the weeks after the Chernobyl disaster of April 26, 1986 to help clean up the radioactive graphite and material that exploded out of Reactor 4 and onto the neighboring roofs of the power plant. When it was no longer useful, the claw was removed from the crane and dumped deep in a forest where it was hoped nobody would find it. 
This 6 to 10 ton control rods, the graphite, the fuel rods, and everything else blew out of the reactor and landed on the rooftops nearby. So imagine someone trying to stand on a rooftop that was so radioactive that it could give such an acute radiation sickness that you basically cook yourself. So this claw was deeply involved in all the intensely radioactive material as it moved the material back into the core. To say the claw is highly radioactive and dangerous is very true. <laughs> Creepy Jail Who doesn't think an abandoned jail is scary? After the catastrophe on the night of April 26th, an alarm went off in the Pripyat City Police Station. The duty officer immediately sent a task force to the station. A few minutes later, it was reported that there was a fire at the station. An alarm raised the entire staff of the department. When it became clear that at the station there was not only fire but also an explosion of the reactor, urgent measures were created to ensure the protection of the population. After evacuation, the police performed the functions of guarding the city, and even less than a day after the evacuation, a twice convict was arrested in Pripyat and one can say the first marauder. The entire city, enterprises, shops, apartments, and other institutions fell on the shoulders of the police. In 1986, each of the Pripyat micro districts were surrounded by a barbed wire fence and an alarm system was installed on almost every house. Eventually, the building was abandoned and left to nature. <laughs> Largest object ever moved. This object is one unique and stranger way to solve a problem, but it was very creative at the time and it seems to have worked enough for now. It also set in train a series of measures to ensure nuclear safety around the world. Now, the whole site is about to be encased inside a vast structure known as the sarcophagus, sealing in some of the most dangerous waste material in the world for at least 100 years. The project has been more than two decades in the making. The behemoth 35,000 ton structure beside us has spent the past few days inching along with a set of purpose-built tracks toward its final destination. This sarcophagus is taller than the Statue of Liberty and larger than Wembley Stadium. But what it resembles most is a very large metal shed. This is the largest object people have ever moved. Its appearance bellies its historic importance. However, it's also a symbol of what we can achieve when the stakes are highest. It's hoped the sarcophagus will draw a line under this catastrophic chapter in the history of nuclear energy. Yet, when the idea of building a vast structure at Chernobyl's ground zero where radiation levels are still dangerous was first put forward in the 90s, people thought it was insane. The craziest proposal was by a Russian scientist that suggested he could outline how to rebuild the plant. That's not going to happen. In 1986, the fourth reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded during a routine stress test. A fire raged for nine days. Maybe it isn't the best idea to take risks in this extreme situation. <laughs> the Red Forest The Red Forest is fitting for this since it happened during the Soviet Union period. Just after midnight on the 26th of April 1986, a steam explosion and ensuing fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant led to the single greatest uncontrolled environmental release of radioactivity. The blast collapsed the roof of Reactor 4, exposing the continuously melting core and spewing clouds of smoke, dust, and radioactive particles into the atmosphere. Closer to the ground, the core sprayed radionuclides like a sprinkler changing direction with the wind and contaminating patches of land around the reactor with shifting gradients that stained the radiation maps with deepening shades of color. Just west off the plant, a large section of pine forest received the most significant fallout dosage with radiation so intense that many of the trees died instantly, turning a rustic bright orange. The color variation earned the New World renowned name the Red Forest. Trees obviously have a threshold when it comes to radiation, but how bad was it really? The explosion and ensuing fire contaminated the soil, water, and atmosphere with 400 times more radioactive material than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and that's a considerate estimate. Chernobyl most likely spewed anywhere from 50 million to 200 million, although the most accepted estimate is the lower. The Haunted Hospital Does radiation just make everything turn haunted? The Pripyat City Hospital No. 126 was once a busy hospital on the outskirts of the city. On the roof of the hospital, a sign reads, Health of the Nation, the Country's Wealth. The hospital had 410 beds. The clinics and outpatient buildings are spread out across several interconnected buildings. The complex also had a morgue, maternity ward, infectious disease ward, and a dental clinic. 
During the disaster, it was here where on the night of the Chernobyl disaster at the nearby nuclear power plant, many firefighters and workers were initially treated. In the aftermath of the accident, 237 people suffered from acute radiation sickness. 28 perished within the first three months. The victims were mostly firemen and rescue workers. Their clothes still remain in the hospital basement, too contaminated to be moved. Later patients were flown to Moscow, which had the only hospital in the Soviet Union to treat radiation injuries. Tools, medical instruments, and documents were left in the mess everywhere that oozes an eerie atmosphere. Radiation levels are high. The basement of the hospital was considered the most dangerous place in the city. The hospital was abandoned the days after the disaster. It was no longer possible to work in an environment with that much radioactivity inside. Freaky Firebugs Firebugs are cooler than fireflies, right? A biologist named Timothy had spent years collecting mutant bugs, birds, and mice around Chernobyl and Fukushima. He was wandering around Pripyat collecting flowers to study their pollen when he reached down to the ground and pulled up this little bug with a red and black marking. It looked like a mutant missing an eye. From then on, he started collecting these little bugs in each place he visited, from the most contaminated parts of the red forest to relatively clean areas and abandoned villages. Eventually, he had several hundreds of these little critters. It was very obvious that deformed patterns were much more prevalent in areas of high contamination. Literally every rock he turned over, he found a signal of the mutagenic properties of the radiation in the region. The impact of radiation on rates of mutation, cancer, and mortality varies a good deal by species. But statistically, there's a simple relationship with dose. Small dose, small effect. Big dose, big effect. There doesn't appear to be a threshold below which there's no effect. Organisms living in nature are much more sensitive to radiation than lab animals comparing mice raised in labs and mice in the wild exposed to identical levels of ionizing radiation. The mortality rate among wild mice is 8 or 10 times that of lab mice. It's because lab animals are protected from most stressors like cold or hunger. Basically, radiation isn't good for anyone or anything. Maybe there's something to learn here. Well, those were some very unsettling facts you probably didn't know about the aftermath and long-term effects of this tragic historic moment. What do you think the strangest thing found in the wasteland is? You can let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. You can also hit subscribe for more awesome Missing Files content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.